Welcome. My name is Steve Winnick. I'm with the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress, and we'll be talking with the leader of Changui Majadero. So, Gabriel, first, just introduce yourself. Tell us your, your name and, and your band. Hello, my name is Gabriel Garcia. I am the musical director of the Afro-Cuban Roots Band based out of Los Angeles, California, named Changui Majadero. And I'm um, it's good to be here. Absolutely. Yeah, well, thank you so much for, for being here and for doing this interview. So, um, first of all, uh, let's just uh, mention that we're doing this uh, concert series, which was the Homegrown at Home concert series for 2020, even though this interview is being conducted uh, in 2021. And we did this under the conditions of the pandemic. And so this was a concert series where the performers stayed where they were and recorded uh, their concert. And so uh, just let us know, how's everyone doing uh, in these strange times in your band and your family and everyone? Thankfully, we are doing all well. Um, very, very blessed to say that we're all healthy right now. Um, I had an incident. Uh, we had my, my, my family where my dad got sick. He caught COVID. Oh, no. years, actually. And it was a scary time, really rough times, but um, uh, they recovered and, you know, thankfully we're, we're doing well. You know, we're, we're hanging in there as far as, you know, not being, being able to perform live as a band, um, not being able to, to, to work. You know, it's, it's, it's been um, rough, but at the same time, uh, it's the perfect opportun opportunity to be counting our blessings at the same time and uh, not take for granted the things that are most important in this small lifetime. Yeah, uh, that's really well put. And thanks for, thanks for that observation. It really is um, one of those times when you have to be thankful for what you do have um, and, and hope for the best for the future. So um, if you could explain to our audiences what Changui is, first of all, that might be good. Yeah, of course. So Changui is a is a style of music that originates from um, from Cuba, specifically from the eastern side of Cuba, uh, Guantanamo, Cuba. Um, it's considered to be the roots of Cuban music. It's one of the the older styles of of Cuban music in um, in in Cuba, and it's it's kind of what uh, equivalent to what the blues is to the United States. You know, the blues is the roots of, of American music, right? A, a lot of it. And sure. so Changui is kind of like the roots of, of, of Cuban music. And from, from Changui, um, later comes other styles of music like Son Cubano and, you know, now to contemporary salsa music. So um, Changui is, is, uh, is a deep-rooted um, music, heavily influ influenced by the African diaspora. Uh, throughout all Latin America, um, very heavily influenced. Great. And uh, yeah, yeah. it started uh, around the 1800s. Is the first um, the first document uh, documentation of of um, of the word Changui was mm -hmm. written uh, by by a, a slave owner who um, who was punishing one of the slaves for, for dancing Changui or something. So that's the first document, documentation of the word Changui in the 1800s. Interesting. Do you know what, you know, what language Changui relates to in, in, in the African world? Well, the, the word Changui, there's many theories of what the word Changui means, but ultimately there's, we don't know what, what it actually means, except that they just refer it to well, Changui is is um the way it was used before is is a is a it was a word for a party in Guantanamo. Uh, so I see. In, 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 uh, so so let me back up a little bit. So in Guantanamo, it's a very it's a countryside. So you have very very country folks, a lot of a lot of farming, a lot of uh, agriculture, and in Guantanamo actually. It used to be the number one exporter of cane sugar mm -hmm. um, until the until that crashed, and um, so so um, 
they would have country party, like countryside parties, where they would in in these parties in the in the mountains in the rural mountains of Guantanamo, they would play this style of music called well they they would play this music and that in these changui parties. So later on, the the music that was being played in these parties was called changui because that's what, like oh let, let's go to the changui party you know. But yeah, so so later on the 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 music, yeah, yeah, it's interesting how that happens. There's other traditions where that happens too. The name for the party <laughs> ends up on the dance and on the music and on other things because it's what people associate with it. That's really interesting. So, how did you personally discover Changui? Man, that's a, that's a, a really a cool journey, crazy journey. So, I'm not, I'm not Cuban. I'm actually Mexican American, mm-hmm. and um, um. I later discovered Changui and Cuban music, for that matter, a little bit later in my life. Um, so I, I'm a. Before becoming a musician, I'm actually a boxer. I was an amateur boxer since I was ten years old until wow. I was like maybe like nineteen years old, and I didn't know that I had like even a musical gene in me or anything like musical in me until I was a, maybe a senior in high school, so maybe like seventeen or something. Or, or, or a friend of mine was playing guitar and I was like, hey, let me try that out. I think I could try, you know, I, I want to see. So I picked up a guitar and um, I instantly fell in love. I was like, and later on I found out that I have a musical gene because my grandma, whom I didn't know because she, my grandma died when my mom was young. So my mom grew up an orphan, uh, was a uh, like a prominent opera singer who who uh toured mexico and and sang opera and she had this high like really high soprano voice really really beautiful voice so it was there that 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 i was kind of discovering that my my love for music and then what i did i just applied the same discipline that i had in boxing as far as like training every day uh you know five days out of the week boxing taught me a lot of discipline and Mm -hmm. kept me out of a lot of trouble when i was young and um so the yeah, so I just applied the same same uh, principles of discipline that I had in boxing and music, and and then music just became an obsession where I just um, instantly um, uh, it just I, I was hooked to it and and I, and I improved. So um, I was playing, you know, doing playing all kinds of other other styles of music outside of Cuban music, you know, music that kids listen to here growing up in the United States. You know what I mean from from rock to hip hop to everything, and um, I I discovered Cuban music once I got into uh, community college and and um, I joined an Afro Afro Cuban Latin ensemble, and it was there where where my mind was just um, introduced to and my ears were introduced to to Cuban rhythms and the tres guitar. Yeah. So the tres guitar is the, is the guitar that I play. The, the Cuban tres it's a three string guitar. Well. It's six strings, but grouped in three, you know, like doubled. And um, it was there where I, I I really wanted to learn the roots of, of that instrument. I would have really wanted to learn, like, how to properly, how to play it. Because I would play by ear. I would listen to recordings. And um, I really wanted to know the roots. Because I, I before uh, playing Cuban music, I, I was a, I was a jazz, study, jazz studies major. So I got actually got my undergrad degree in jazz. Mm-hmm. So I knew that in order to 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 be well versed in in jazz music, it's it's important to know, know the roots of of jazz. You know, learn learn blues, learn the blues. So I I thought, well, if I want really want to learn the Cuban tres, I I I should probably do the same thing. I should learn the roots of where this um of of the tres comes from, and and that led me to Changui and living in in Guantanamo, Cuba, and studying studying with the masters of Changui in Guantanamo, Cuba, by uh, one of the prominent, um, most important groups in Guantanamo called the uh, Changui Guantanamo. So you say you spent some time living in Guantanamo and studying Changui with the masters there. How long were you there for? Um, so the first time I was there, I was there for about like, maybe like three, three, to, three to four months. And then I would go back and forth. Um, so, yeah, it's just been kind of a, a a journey of of going back and forth, and and um, and uh, recording out there and doing different different things and 
and also my my so my maestros uh, had a a residency tour in Mexico in the part of Mexico. Funny enough, where 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 my dad's from, so I I have a lot of family out there in Mexico. So when they were they were there for a year performing at a at a um, at a Cuban bar in Puerto Vallarta. And um, so when they were over there, I just stayed with them pretty much the whole year. That's great. Yeah. And that's something we don't hear about much. I think Americans don't hear about all the cultural exchange among different Latin American countries. and The fact that there's, oh, let me say that again, because I hit, I hit the mic. <laughs> let, let, me, let me say that again. So, yeah, and that's something that we as Americans don't really hear about that much is the cultural exchange between different Latin American countries uh, like Cuba and Mexico and people going from one country to the other for residencies and things. That's a that's a great. And, and another thing. interesting thing that that I I feel like here in this in in uh, this country or in in the United States um, that you don't see much is is the tradition of of kind of respecting the elders and and learning from the elders. You know what I mean? As far as um, uh, well, I, don't, I, I you know I can't speak for for I'm I guess I'm talking more of the mainstream American music, right? right. I mean, where where um, in Changui music, it's really res it's really important to kind of um, you know like like you learn from the my from the masters, you know, you learn from them and you respect them and and you honor them, and when even in the lyrics, you know, there's a lot of compositions in Changui that they they speak of their predecessors. Even the the um, the um, the maestros, they speak of their predecessors in their music and their lyrics, and they give homage to them. Right, that's great. Um, so uh, let's talk about some of the masters that you that you did study with. Um, who were who were some of the folks that you worked with? So um, there's there's this band called Changui Guantanamo, and it's a they're one of the most um, um, important groups to to have exposed Changui to the world, who 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 have taken Changui outside of Cuba and, and toured and performed and and uh, one of the 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 people that I studied was with was one of the lead singers. His name is Jose Andres Rodriguez. Uh, my tres guitar player. His name was Carmelo. Mm -hmm. um, so. People aren't gonna know who these people are, these names, because it's a, it's a really rare style of music. But people who who know Cuban culture and know about Changui know who they are. You know? Yeah, that's great. And uh, I'll I'll note that um, during your concert for the Library of Congress, you uh, played some songs by Tabera, who was another master. Um, talk a little about him and his influence. Man, Tabera. The only thing I can say, man, is a, is a beautiful man with very little words. had had a lot to say with no words. It's 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 so crazy how how he was a man of few words, but when he did speak, it was when he did say a few words, it was so profound. Um. Yeah, and yeah. Um. You know, I think I think. You know, for me, when I approach music or when I approach Changui, I don't, you know, I come from a musical background. You know, I got my master's degree in music, you know, musical. I could get nerded out on music theory and all that. Right. But to me, that's just one part of the equation, you know, when you're learning a style of music. You know what I mean? Well, specifically with Changui. The other part of the equation that to me is equally as important is to learn the culture, you know, to, to learn the, the, the culture. So, because I feel like when you perform that the music, you know, if you have that in you, you know, you could you could um, you could um, apply the feeling of the music better. You know, what I mean, if you, if you understand the culture, you know, what I mean, if you understand the people, if you understand everything, it's less you 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 know, because there's one thing that you can't notate is feeling. If there's one thing you know that you can't right. notate in 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 you know. So, so um, one important thing I think that I learned from from Tavera and from these ma and and from all these maestros is not just how to play the rhythms, but just you know the feeling of the music, you know the lifestyle. You know what I mean? It's just, just 
And and Tavera, apart from being a master bong, bong, bongo player in this uh, genre of music called Changui, is just his personality, his way of being. Um, you know, it's almost this Zen way of being. You know what I mean? Of of just you know very 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 quiet, not many very subtle, not not many words, but just just a masterful when it comes to his craft. You know what I mean? It's um, heavily influenced me. You know what I mean? Not just as a musician, but as also as a, as a person, as a human being. You know. Mm-hmm. And um, it, uh, so Tavera is, of course, kind of his nickname. What what his his actual name was? Uh, Andres Fisto Covas. Is that yeah? Correct? Andres Fisto Covas. Exactly. Excellent. Um, so you so you mentioned. Uh, some of the instruments, the tres, the um, the bongos, as important instruments. What are the what, what would you say are the central in- instruments to the Changui tradition? Well, to to the traditional ensemble, the the fundamental um, instruments is the the bongo, bongo de monte, which aren't normal bongos that that um, aren't bon- normal bongos that you would see in a in a salsa ensemble. They're they're actually a little bit bigger and the way you tune tune the bongos is you have to heat them up with with right. fire or some some type of heat you know what i mean and yeah. what it does is it expands the the um the skin yeah you could tune it either to make it sound uh tighter or not so um yeah so you had told me about the 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 bongos and the special kind of drums that there are in changui and the Trace guitar. What other uh, instruments are important to this so tradition? The, the other instruments that are important in the traditional ensemble um, is the the marimbula. So the marimbula is a is a it's a big box with metal thumbs, metal uh, pegs, almost like a like a a big thumb piano. I actually have one right here. Let's see if I can point point cool. it. It's in the middle of the the plants. <laughs> But yeah, you could you could see her here. Oh yeah. So this was a substitute for the bass. Mm-hmm. So um, so yeah. So for the the marimbula, uh, before a bass, the stand up bass existed in Cuba. They had a marimbula. Um, and uh, the other instrument that's important is the metal scraper called a guayo, which is this metal scraper where it's it's the it's the only instrument that's playing the downbeat in, in the music. Everything else is off the beat, very syncopated. Uh, the maracas is another, the other important instrument. Um, I'm sure everyone knows what a, a maracas are. And uh, what else did I miss? Yeah, I, I think I named the maracas, the guayo, the tres, the, uh, the, bon, the bongo de monte, and the marimbula. Mm-hmm. So in our ensemble, uh, instead of using... Um, the marimbula, we use uh, the bass, the electric bass. Why? Because, well, I think just because we like the sonority of, of how the bass sounds as opposed to, um, well, I mean, we like the marimbula too, and we do use the marimbula, but it, it's just harder when, when you're playing live gigs. Uh, it's harder to to um, to use a marimbula and make it sound big and thick in a live performance right. and not have a feedback issues you know and plus in in the changui ensemble the marimbula is more um it's more of a um percussive instrument as opposed to a, a melodic instrument because the the maru the marimbula isn't traditionally isn't tuned to the key of whatever the song is it's more of a low thumping sound Got so it. what we do with the bass is that we add the actual harmonies of what of, of what the tres is playing Makes sense. But I will say it was great that in your concert you played the marimbula, and I think it, it it's the only time the marimbula has been on the Library of Congress website. I don't know of any other recordings of it on our website. So it's kind of nice to have that as part of your concert and kind of documenting that, you know, that older tradition of uh of Changui. And then, of course, in your band, you also have horns and uh, and other parts of the ensemble. So explain how you adapted the Changui to a larger Cuban sound. Yeah, so that's new, fairly new to, to even my ensemble. Before, we didn't have any, any horns. Uh, traditionally, you won't find any, any horns in a, in a Changui ensemble. But yeah, we added uh, a, a trumpet 
just because trumpet is very is a very um key sound to Cuban music in general to 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 Cuban song and uh we love the sound of trumpet and and um and the uh the guy that plays with us plays trumpets plays maraca sings he can play keyboard he's a very versatile musician so yeah so we added uh, the trumpet just to add a, that extra little um layer of icing on top mm -hmm. so how would you say that um if people are listening to you versus the cuban music that they might be more familiar with what are they going to hear that's different in the in your your style of changui that's a great question um so if you really listen for for all the the listeners who are non musicians, um, I think the the best the best thing to to instead of trying to to understand the rhythms because the rhythms are completely different in Changui as opposed to other styles of Cuban music. You know the the rhythms that the the, the bongo player is is different. The rhythm that the bass player and the marimbolas play, players is, is different. So. Um, I think things to look for is, for example, in, in, in Changui music, uh, in particular, by the way, we don't only play Changui music. We also play other styles of Cuban music. We also right. play son. We also play boleros. We also play cha-cha-chas. And it, it was what we demonstrated, uh, for the library Congress or the, the live stream concert. We kind of just kind of demonstrated a different variety of styles that we could, uh, perform. Um, but if you're if you're trying to differentiate between changui and what a changui is and what a son is or changui in a bolero, well, one of the the key uh, things is like in changui music, the tres for the body of the song, the what the Cuban tres player is playing is gonna be doubling what the melody is doing, uh, what the melody is singing. So, um, for example. Um, um, the the song that we played for for um for the Library of Congress that's a Changui, uh, let's say Pacua Me Voy, which was the first song. You'll mm -hmm. hear in the body of the song, you'll hear the tres um doubling up on the melody during the verse, and then when the chorus hits, oh no, sin permiso, Pacua Me Voy, then the tres player is playing like a little a tumbao, you know, a regular tumbao that you would hear in, in, in song music or music that other people might might associate Cuban music with. So that's one way to differentiate Changui from from song. Um another way of course is to listen what the what the bongo player is doing. The the uh, in Changui music the bongo <clears throat> is is more improvising but not improvising freely playing whatever they want improvising within a a certain uh vocabulary in within uh within um uh, changui music um within the the bongo de monte um mm -hmm. there's a certain set of 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 uh phrases that the bongo player should play in order for it to be changui um so if you listen to the bong the bongos in changui music and the bongos in son or other other styles of cuban music You'll um, you'll hear a complete uh, the difference, a complete uh, difference between them. Uh, another way to differentiate is also to see what the bass player is playing. The bass player isn't playing the same; is playing different patterns as opposed to in in son and son and salsa music. You hear a tumbao playing, uh, you know, like if you downbeat, tum 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 tum. That's your like your your typical tumbao in changui. It's different. It's, uh, dun, 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 dun. So yeah, so that's that's the the main difference within um, cha Changui and and Son. So to differentiate between the two. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks so much. So um, one other thing that we haven't talked about much is the importance of dance to all of these um, musical traditions. So how does the interplay between the music and the dance um, affect what you're playing? The interplay between the music and the dance is very important. Um, so in Changui, the, the, in, in, in a traditional Changui ensemble, 
you actually have two dancers that are part of the band. You know, like like Changui Guantanamo, whenever mm-hmm. they went on tour, whenever they performed, they always brought their dancers. And they, they didn't see them as a separate unit. They didn't see as, oh, we have the 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 musicians and uh, the band is the musicians and the dancers are separate. No, the dancers were, were part of the band. You know, that's, that's, a, that's the another uh, cool concept that, that's different, you know. Yeah. So, um, obviously, we don't have dancers because budgets. You know, if if we were able to 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 bring dancers, we would. But but um, a lot of people don't want to pay for for dancers be- because they don't feel like it's they feel like it's something extra as opposed to it's part of the part of the ensemble. So yeah, so the the dancers are dancing to according to what the bongos playing, according to what the marimbola player is doing, according to what's happening in the lyrics and. And and the improvising the lyrics traditionally, you know, there's a, there's a lot of interplay going on between um, conversating back and forth between movement, between rhythms, and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Great. So um, we came across your group through our program called the Archive Challenge, where we were looking for musicians to find materials from our archive and um, and you know create their own interpretations. So talk about that process. How did you how did you get in touch with us first? That was really cool. Um that was a really cool challenge that you guys did. Um I found out about it through Folk Alliance, I believe, uh, mm-hmm. for the conference, Folk Alliance conference. I received the email that they're having this archive challenge and I was like, I was interested. I, I did some research. And I saw that you. What we had to do is we had to choose a, uh, any song that were, was in the Library of Congress archives and uh, do an interpretation of of uh, the song. So um, I just immediately just started. I didn't know anything about the Library of Congress archives. To be honest, it's it's, it's a it's a really it really is a treasure trove trove of 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 uh, a lot of historic, beautiful, and important music. Yeah, and just to say that's the reason we did this challenge is so many great musicians, you know, they have no reason to know about the archive, and so we we gave you a reason. So <laughs> yeah, no, no, beautiful, and I'm and I'm glad you guys uh, did this. And I had no clue that 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 there was music, Cuban music, happening in Florida during the time for the songs that uh, that I chose. For example, um, so we had to choose a song, and I was just looking through just different archives and 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 you guys have a lot of blues in there. Yeah. So I didn't know that you guys had any Cuban music until I received a, a an email, I believe by, by Thea. I believe, um, I think she, she sent me an email and she said, Oh, why don't you check out uh, this the list of Cuban music, Cuban American mm-hmm. music that we have here. So when I saw that, I was just, I was just blown away. I was like, wow, I didn't know that, 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 um, that this exists. Um, so one of the songs that, that we chose, was a song called El Sacrificio that that is a song uh that was composed by a Mexican who was a Mexican uh migrant who was living in Florida with a bunch of Cubans working the the tobacco fields so I, and I I found that very interesting I thought that was really cool because I'm like that's like the story of of, of my life you know that's 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 right. like He's like I'm a reincarnation of him, you know, because I'm <laughs> right. a guy playing Cuban music with a bunch of Cubans over here. So, I, so immediately that caught my attention, and I wanted to do a, a version of that song. And another song that we chose was um, what was the other song? We added our um, our own little version to the song. Um, oh, uh, it was a Puntos Guajiro. Puntos Guajiros. There you go, Puntos yeah. Guajiros. Um, so we, we the Puntos Guajiro. I love the rhythm. I had I, the song already has stress in it, so I was like, I'm gonna do this song, and and I'm gonna do a, um as an introduction, and I'm gonna do a little homage to to the American folk life. Uh, add add a little homage to it to the song, and and that's pretty much what I did. Yeah, it's very nice that you actually say the name of our center in the in the new lyrics that you added to the song. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, the, the 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 lyrics say American American folk life. Como te gusta el son? También Alan Lomax, todito logo so. So American folk life, folk life, like 
you like Son. I, I see how you like Son. Right. And Alan Lomax as well. He he had fun with it as well, you know, re recording it. So that's pretty much. Yeah, that. that's great. <laughs> we we were really happy to hear that when you when you played that uh, at Folk Alliance and also um, in the concert that you did for us, uh, which people can see on our website. Um, so uh, one thing that I noticed was uh, one of the first songs that you did in your concert was you already mentioned it, Pakuba Me Boy, which is about traveling to Cuba. Um, and now we're in this situation where where we can't really travel much. Um, how is that affecting you as a, both as a musician and as you know a student of this tradition that you're that we're kind of stuck for a while? Well, to be honest, um, music to me, for me, music and culture really has no borders. You know what I mean? Has has never had any restriction. You know what I mean? Um, regardless of whatever laws in in place by man by by humans. Uh, music has been able always to to cross those those restrictions, you know. And for me, um, you know, I fell in love with this music, with the style of music. So, you know, as 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 um, cheesy as it might sound, you know, like love overcame these restrictions. You know, what I mean, this this passion, this love for this style of music, you know, had. Um, overcame these restrictions and I didn't I'm it's never been a problem for me put it that way to mm -hmm. you know um to go to Cuba if 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 I if I wanted to go if I if I needed to go um because of that you know what I mean because I know I think that my intentions are correct my intentions are I have the right intentions you know what sure. I mean so of course is 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 this uh the restriction and the the embargo is it difficult on the Cuban people of course you know what I mean there's a lot of a lot of complications there yeah yeah and of course now with the pandemic we have the sort of extra <laughs> uh stricture uh, upon us that we can't you know there's a lot of movement that we can't do yeah yeah and i know that it's 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 tough right now in cuba too right now with the I mean, it's tough worldwide, you know. I mean, this, right. this pandemic, and and you know, we gotta hang in there as humanity, and and not um and help each other out. Not, Absolutely. Uh, not not start panicking and getting in fear and panic buying and all that stuff. So. Yeah, good advice. So we've talked a lot about the the Changui tradition, but um, we haven't talked that much about specifically your band and what your projects are. So tell us a little about your band and what you've been doing and recordings and all that kind of stuff. So apart from from the actual band members, um, so I I, I uh, so the way this band started, I told you it started by me just recording videos and music on my own. You know, I would I would record all the all the instruments. I mean, I'll play the the bass, the tres, the the, the bongo, and all that. So right now I'm 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 just going back to my roots of just doing that, just recording. Uh, lately, I've been been um, been uh, recording more music and and exploring other other um, sounds um, through Changui. So, like I said, I'm not Cuban. Um, so so my background. Is is I grew up listening to a lot of different music, uh, uh, music of the African American diaspora, from funk to hip hop to, you know, I grew up listening to a lot of that music, to you know, a lot of uh, Mexican music, corridos and and all that. So, so right now, what I'm I'm doing now is is just blending my background into Changui music. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna be releasing a, a song that's kind of a fusion of Changui and hip hop. Um, I'm recording stuff that's a it's a fusion of of Cuban and Changui with with my influence basically. Great. So I guess that brings up kind of another question that I didn't ask before about Changui, which is what are the songs typically about? And to extend that, how is your writing that you're doing using Changui or or blending with Changui different from the traditional Changui? 
So Changui, um, a lot of the songs, like 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 I said before, are are homages to to the predecessors, to their predecessors mm-hmm. who were playing. So a lot of them are are like a lot of songs are homages to to um to to past Changuiceros maestros who have passed away. A lot of songs are about stories that have you know are stories in within uh, Guantanamo. A lot of the songs are about just having a good time, partying, dancing, you know what I mean? Like, vengan a bailar, bailadores, come and dance, come and just party with us and hanging out. So a lot of it is just a very party atmosphere kind of a feeling of, of just having a good time, you know what I mean? Because you got to remember back then, the, the the lifestyle was different, you know what I mean? Like, like people were working hard, you know what I mean? You know, we're really working hard. So when right. they finally got a, a, a time to to break and to 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 have a break from this this work life, you know what I mean, or whatever slave life, you know, to actually perform music and to to actually just have a good time, it's 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 different than us. Well, I mean, maybe not different for others, but for for others, but for us who live in this country, to go and let's say we go out to a bar and go drink or go hang out with friends. It's a different, a little bit different from when, when all you've been doing is um, work in the fields and, and the, the, the atmosphere is different. Um, sure. What was the question? I'm sorry. So, so how does the, the songwriting that you do in oh, within it, the tradition it, differ? It, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so um, I, I don't know if I told you that my, my dad composes um, Mexican co- Corridos. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with corrido music. From Absolutely. We, as you know, we have a lot of those on, on, on our website, website as well. Yeah. He, he composed a lot of music, but with a, with a really political conscious twist. Um, and and uh, really, really beautiful lyrics. So he, he wrote a song called uh, Changui uh, by Yotzinapa. Well, he wrote a song. I named it Changui Ayotzinapa, but the, he wrote a corrido that was for the 43 missing students of Ayotzinapa, Mexico, the massacre that occurred. And what I did is I just took the lyrics and I, and I made it into a Changui format. And I made a Changui. And that, that song is on our on our first album. So it's originally a corrido, but I made it into a Changui. So I've been using lyrics from my dad that are originally corridos. So that's coming from my influence of the Mexican side, you know what I mean? And I just to turn it into a Changui. Um, what I'm doing with this song that I'm releasing soon is that I'm taking my influence when I used to listen to, when I was younger, I used to listen to a lot of a lot of G-funk rap, a lot of West Coast rap. So I'm taking, which is essentially the, the music, the rhythm that's being played, it's all funk, you know, it's, it's a lot, they were sampling a lot of funk music. Um, so I'm taking that influence and I'm adding it to Changui. I'm taking the the rapping, I'm the 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 emceeing or whatever the rapping, and I'm applying it to the Changui. Um, in that sense, um, and just the overall feeling and the flavor. Because remember, I told you how to me it's important in order to really learn a style of music. It's really important to um, not only know the, the the rhythms and the music side of things, but also the feeling. Also. The, I think that I'm adding my feeling to it, and what is my feelings? My my feeling growing up as a Chicano here in Southern California, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's I mean it's so interesting as you say that uh, you you have one ethnic tradition and you're working within another one to a certain extent. The the um, sort of moving between Mexican American and Cuban American forms. Um, it's really interesting. Yeah, go on. And uh, from a from a from a marketing point of view, it doesn't work. People don't <laughs> want to hire a Mexican playing Cuban music, <laughs> right? You know, so so that that's been a challenge. But at the same time, I mean, I have to do what I have to do. You know, like what am I gonna? Right. You don't have to emphasize it in the marketing necessarily, but <laughs> but for those of us who are who are interested in that kind of thing, I mean, just the thought that these corridos can be, you know can be made into Changui songs um, is just a really interesting uh, approach and an interesting thing to. And I think, uh, I think that you know. you're, you're going to appreciate the next, tr- this uh, next uh, single that I'm releasing of it's a, it's a uh, Changui. It's the first Changui hip hop song that I do. 
Oh, then, then by the way, I also been fusing, fusing, um, adding lyrics in English and Spanish. That way, I could open the market or open the ears to people who don't understand the lyrics. You know, I mean, who are, who like the 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 rhythm, like the music. It's fun. It sounds nice, but they can't understand the lyrics. Right. So I did a song in Spanglish. Uh, I did a, a version of 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 um, of of. It was a it was an homage to to Bob Marley because we we uh, did a we had a tour in in Tulsa Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. We played for the Oklahoma Roots Festival where we were headlining for for the Whalers for Bob Marley and the Whalers. And I'm a right. huge fan of, of of Bob Marley. You know what I mean? I mean I grew up listening to Bob Marley too. You know, and uh, so I did a ch- I wrote a Changui song as an homage to to um, to the Whalers and Bob Marley. And that song was a Changui that I did in Spanglish. It's mm-hmm. called uh, one one love for for Oklahoma. That's that, great. I can send it to you guys in links if you're interested. That's Absolutely. Of- yeah, we'd love to hear that, and and really, uh, we'd love to just keep up with all the things that you are doing. Um, so oh, yeah. I'm sorry. So the important thing is you said one of the things that I'm that I'm doing that's adding my influence is also adding the Spanglish in there. You know what I mean? That to to the Spanglish is important. Why? Because I grew up speaking English and Spanish too, you know. So sure. that's one, one important uh, thing to know. Yeah, yeah, and as you say, I think it will help um, English speakers who love the music but don't really understand what's going on in the songs um, to get into some of your songs as well. And you know, they might learn a little Spanish and then get into the the pure Spanish songs as well. So that would be great um, to get more people into. Cuban music and Changui and even the Mexican roots. Um, we have a lot of that, as I said, on our website as well. And we're always encouraging people to take a look at what we have. Um, so Gabriel Garcia, I want to thank you so much for doing this interview with us. Um, and we want to ask everyone to check out the concert of Changui Majadero on the Library of Congress website. And, uh, and we're glad that you watched this interview as well. Thank you so much. Gabriel, thanks again. Thank you guys for having us. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, tuning in and checking out our band. It's a great pleasure, great honor to be on this platform. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions uh, about what we do with music, please feel free to to contact us. You can check out our, our music on our website. Everything's uh, – you can stream our music for free on our website, uh, com. And uh, thank you so much. All right. Thanks.